So in a naive B cell, uh, IgM and IgD are expressed on the cell surface. And if you recall, if you look at the heavy chain gene locus that's shown at the top, the way that IgM and IgD are produced is that in the heavy chain gene locus, transcription occurs through the VDJ region, to give you the variable region of the protein, as well as the constant mu and the constant delta regions to produce either IgM or IgD in terms of the heavy chain protein. Now, once a naive B cell becomes activated, if it happens to encounter an antigen that fits its antigen binding site, the B cell, the activated B cell, uh, will undergo mitosis. We'll talk about B cell activation in a later video. But for now, recognize that a naive B cell can become an activated B cell if the antigen binding sites on the surface of IgM and IgD recognize an antigen. Um, and if that happens, the active B cell will undergo mitosis. And you'll have an, uh, a, a clone, uh, you have an army of clones. Now, what are these B cells going to do? Some of them will start secreting IgM, and that was in a previous video when we talked about how a B cell can uh, secrete uh, IgM, um, secrete antibodies. So that was covered in a previous video. But the other group of um, B cells will undergo a process, actually two processes, called affinity maturation and isotype switching. So these processes are going to happen at the same time, and they're going to allow the uh, antigen binding site to be improved so that you have higher affinity binding for the antigen. That's going to be covered in the next video. And the other process that's going to happen is isotype switching. Um, where we're going to be making different types of antibody. So though both of these processes are happening at the same time, I'm going to describe isotype switching first. So there's a uh, B cell and it's got IgD and IgM on its surface. So when we talk about isotype switching, what we really are talking about is the antibody uh, isotype switching from IgM and IgD to IgG or IgA or IgE. These are different antibody isotypes. So when we switch, uh, when we perform isotype switching, we are switching from the IgM and IgD isotypes to one of the other isotypes. And those antibodies are going to fight uh, infections different ways. And we'll cover that in another video about why a cell, why the body would want to switch to IgG or IgA. Uh, a. But we'll cover that later. So, I want to tell you how the process of uh, isotype switching occurs at the DNA level. So, let's say that the, uh, we've activated a B cell and the immune system has decided we need to switch to making IgG to fight a certain type of infection. How is that going to happen? Well, we'll see later that helper T cells will release cytokines that tell B cells to switch from IgM to a specific a type of antibody. So let's say cytokines have told these B cells, you know what, we need IgG to fight this infection. All right, so let's see how um, we switch from making heavy chain IgM to heavy chain IgG. So the first thing that's going to happen is uh, during isotype switching is a uh, new gene is turned on and that's going to make a protein called AID, activation induced cytidine deaminase. So when a B cell becomes activated and undergoes isotype switching because of signals from cytokines, AID is turned on. It's an enzyme. And you can see there, it's a cytidine deaminase. What does that mean? Well, it is going to remove an amine group from the uh, nucleotide cytosine. Where is it going to do it? It's going to do it in these regions of DNA called switch regions. So if you remember the uh, RAG1 and 2 enzymes, those were combination enzymes that landed on certain regions of DNA and cut DNA, AID uh, and its partner, we'll see, are a little bit similar to that. So AID, uh, it has affinity for these regions of DNA called switch regions or switch sequences. And you're going to find them between the constant regions in the heavy chain gene, and you're gonna find it upstream of the constant mu. So what AID does is it lands on certain uh, switch sequences depending on the signal. So if the signal for this cell is to switch to making uh, IgG, 
it's going to land on the AI on the switch sequence right upstream of constant gamma. So if you see there in red, that's the constant gamma um, uh, DNA sequence. So that we want to switch to using that one. We don't want to use constant mu or constant delta or constant alpha. We want to hook up the constant delta. I'm sorry, constant gamma to the VDJ region. So the AID enzyme lands on these switch sequences of DNA, and it actually alters the um, cytosines, removing a, an amine group. And actually, when that happens, it converts the cytosine to uracil. Now, uracil is normally a nucleotide found in RNA, not DNA. And if uracil is found in, R in DNA, a DNA repair enzyme called uracil DNA glycosylase, abbreviated UNG, will actually try to remove the uracils from DNA. So now that AID has modified the DNA in these switch regions, UNG goes, lands on the uracils, and cuts the DNA. And now that the DNA is going to be cut, what happens is this whole region of DNA is removed from the genome. So we have now physically altered the DNA in an activated B cell to remove the constant regions, the constant mu, the constant delta, and anything between the switch regions. So we're making a permanent change in the DNA of these B cells. And now these two pieces of DNA are stitched together, and we have a, a heavy chain gene locus that looks different. So now we have the VDJ region adjacent to the constant um, gamma region, and you can see that there in red. So the enzymes AID and UNG were involved in modifying the DNA at the switch sequences so that the DNA is removed from the genome, um, the constant regions between the VDJ and the one that's been chosen. Here we've chosen constant gamma. I'm sorry. Yes, no, constant gamma. Here right. So now, uh, when this cell turns on this heavy chain gene and it transcribes through here, it's going to transcribe the variable region and the constant gamma region. And if you recall, we talked about all constant regions have a secretion coding exon and a membrane coding exon. So now that we've done isotype switching, the B cell can decide, do I want to secrete this IgG, or do I want to leave it on the membrane? And in fact, both of those things can occur. So if the B cell uh, wants to leave the IgG on its membrane, and it will do this if it wants to become a memory B cell, then it will use the uh, membrane coding exon. If on the other hand, this uh, B cell wants to secrete IgG, and some of them will, then it, it will utilize the secretion coding exon of constant gamma. So we've undergone isotype switching. We have gone from making an IgM, IgD uh, heavy chain to making the IgG version of the heavy chain. And how did that happen? Physically, permanently modifying the DNA of these cells. These cells can never go back to making IgM or IgD. That DNA has been removed from the genome using these enzymes. So this process is known as isotype switching. And now that th that's occurred, that plasma cells can secrete IgG, and IgG will attack the pathogen. Um, and we'll talk about effector functions of antibodies in a later video. So that's the process known as isotype switching.